So let's start. And so today we will continue with a fluorescence spectroscopy which we were discussing in the last class and since there was a quiz so I hope all of you have studied. Uh, so this is the thing that I discussed in the last class. So I started and went into detail to explain you what is difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence comes from singlet state, phosphorescence come from triplet state, fluorescence is faster, phosphorescence is relatively slower. slower. We also discussed in the last class the fluorescence light, fluorescence light that emits is red shifted and the reason is why it is red shifted because it comes from the lower vibrational state that is why it is red shifted. I discussed about internal conversion, what is internal conversion, non radiative like it from higher vibrational state comes to the lower vibrational state of the excited state from there it emits. So, it can have a stoke shift right, it is shifted towards higher wavelength. I discussed about quantum yield, so each fluorophore has this characteristic that they will not emit everything that absorbs. So, the it depends upon the property of that fluorophore and that is called quantum yield. There is a question also about quantum yield. So, uh, and then I talk to you about fluorescence and isotropy briefly and subsequently like last 10, 15 minutes I showed you some application of fluorescence steady state essentially talking about how you can use this for a binding KD determination, binding of protein ligand, protein, protein, protein DNA and various other aspects. So, this was what I had discussed. Now, I will continue from here, go a little more how to design experiment, what to do about experiment, how you can use fluorescence for studying various application. So, let us start, we had introduced you briefly and we will go in little more detail. Uh -huh. Before I go, questions, yes. Fluorescence and isotropy, fluorophore kaise solution mein tumble karta hai, that is a relaxation property if you look at briefly, right. So, here was like how it decays that is di dictated by fluorescence and isotropy, right. So, how it decays when it goes to excited state and how it decays that is fluorescence and isotropy typically. Um, that, that is given by the like uh, uh, anisotropy. Today also I have some portion on anisotropy. So, yeah. So, if you look at this is the time uh, like it is a lifetime of fluorophore actually not anisotropy I had not discussed, lifetime I had discussed. Anisotropy is extension of that measure, how to measure it I will tell you today in more detail. Okay. So, lifetime I had discussed that it is a decay of a fluorescence. So, you excite and how it is decaying, there is a time constant associated with each fluorophore, this is time taken to decay and that is how you determine the fluorescence lifetime of a fluorophore. So, this was how you determine the KD of a fluorophore by looking at uh, those who missed, right. So, what we are doing taking a fluorophore, we are adding the ligand and the fluorescence is changing up or down. And delta f we are plotting with a ligand concentration, then you fit to some equation, you can get like here the protein rest uh, concentration, ligand concentration and Kd. You fit this equation, you can get the Kd and that I showed you few of the example how one can determine the Kd for protein, protein, protein drug like a tubulin binding to colchicine, we have shown you. So, fluorophores, because fluorescence has to be done with a moiety that is giving fluorescence that is called fluorophore. Like a chromophore we have in absorption spectrum, here it is called fluorophore. There can be two kind of fluorophore, one is called say indigenous fluorophore or intrinsic fluorophore, that is a biological fluorophore, it can be various things coming from amino acid. So, there are three kind of amino acid that gives fluorescence, what are those? Tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine does not have that much quantum yield. So, these are the so, preferred one, the intrinsic fluorophore for any protein is a tryptophan, right. So, many protein has tryptophan, not all, many protein has a tryptophan and the location of tryptophan tells you a lot about this protein. I will show you some of the example in today's class, where tryptophan is located, how buried it is, how exposed it is, that tells a lot of protein, structure, dynamics, its binding and all those. So, amino acid especially tryptophan 
to some extent tyrosine are also nice fluorophore that can be used to understand many things. Then you can have a some like a, uh, some cofactor or vitamins retinol right example was in your exam was retinol that also porphyrin these are indigenous fluorophore that, that are there. Then something called extrinsic fluorophore that we have to add to protein to make it fluorescent. Those are exogenous fluorophore or extrinsic fluorophore it can have some it can be some dye right which can go and bind to the protein photosensitizer molecular marker like a GFP and all those you might have heard about. So, these are various fluorophores that are used in fluorescence spectroscopy we will discuss today little more detail. So, indigenous fluorophore and ex, uh, like a uh, or extrinsic fluorophore intrinsic fluorophore here is a given the first one is excitation wavelength and you look at second one is emission wavelength. So, you excite a tryptophan at 280 that is absorption right a protein ka absorption from 280 mein karte because we excite tryptophan or tyrosine or phenylalanine these are three. So, if you look at all of these three about 280 and their emission is red shifted. So, 350, 300, 280 and then some of the structural proteins basically also gives fluorescence some of the enzymes or coenzymes like flavine, FAD, NADH, NADPH they are also giving fluorescence vitamins and vitamin B6 lipids many of these give some kind of fluorescence these are indigenous or intrinsic fluorophore. So, this is some of the structure of those if you look at the structure you can understand what is the moiety that absorbs right. So, first you have to absorb to emit right. So, absorption is coming from those unsaturated bonds in tryptophan has a ring right. So, here again tryptophan has a ring phenylalanine also has a ring many of NADPH, FADPH you look at these moiety these are basically the moiety which gives like absorbs light and give fluorophore. So, these are called intrinsic fluorophore because ye protein may already hote hai, right these are in protein that is why they are called intrinsic fluorophore right. So, tryptophan already at some amino acid out of 20 one is tryptophan another is tyrosine. So, in a sequence you can have then NADH it is again binds to many protein. So, those protein where FAD or NAD or, or something like that binds they give fluorescence. So, these are intrinsic fluorophore. So, now where we can use this property of intrinsic fluorophore what all we can use one already we discussed for KD determination right application of various uh, this fluorophore intrinsic fluorophore one is like you can understand the conformational change in protein and enzyme right or whatever binding that is happening because of chloro cofactor or something any conformational change you can study in protein and peptide. How? How using this intrinsic idea how can we use this uh, intrinsic fluorophore, fluorophore idea to understand the conformational change. So, as we discussed fluorescence depends upon the environment of the fluorophore right. So, if say my tryptophan is somewhere here right it will have one kind of fluorescence respect to if you expose it. Suppose upon or, or vice versa if this is here and it we induce a folding upon something binding suppose this is a DNA binding protein in solution it remains flexible upon DNA binding it takes this structure right. So, environment of this tryptophan is changing and that will be reflected in the emission spectra of this fluorophore. You can probe this emission spectra before DNA adding and after DNA adding. So, suppose this is before and and man look it this is after. So, you know that fluorescence has changed that means environment of this fluorophore has changed and therefore, you know that there is a conformational change upon binding just by doing a quicker experiment with DNA without DNA you know that conformation is changing. So, it can use for conformational change of a protein or enzyme or binding and a co binding of cofactor quickly one can do it 
the the property of active site of enzyme right so enzymatic action happens so enzymatic action happens because there is some breathing motion in the active site right active site has to do catalysis catalysis may there will be some bond formation some bond breakage that means some amino acid are getting engaged and they are also conformational change happening so if enzymatic active activation happening one conformational change that happens in protein you can monitor or if enzyme is happening or not a khamaisa dye lenge we will take a dye which is not fluorescing and upon enzymatic action it becomes a fluorescent so now as your enzymatic action process your fluorescence will start appearing and it will keep going and now you can plot the fluorescence to see it can it can be used as a monitor for enzymatic action to happen right is it clear so you can really monitor as enzymatic action happens by fluorescence by monitoring fluorescence at a particular wavelength so you can in real time monitor the enzyme action using fluorescence now one of the important property and it's a um, like a 20 years back this was quite uh, quite a fashionable <coughs> thing to uh, study the protein folding uh, physicist physical chemist biologist lots of people were studying protein folding now people are uh, trying to probe liquid liquid phase separation using same concept so what is there like if you take a protein how it unfolds or how it refolds that can be also studied using same concept you monitor the fluorescence of a intrinsic tryptophan and upon folding it will change either go up or shift and that you plot it and that tells about the protein folding a stability of a protein right in protein engineering what you want always want to make a protein stable right how do you know your protein is stable or not you have to do a stability test right because suppose I you are engineering a protein and want to make it a robust enzyme right a machine method bol nahi sakte ki you have to work only at 4 degree if you are using for industrial purpose right if you are making a daru right? it is done by enzyme now it has to be done in sub fermenter fermenter you have to you cannot control the temperature but you need this enzyme to act, act at 37 or 40 or 45 so you have to make a thermo stable enzyme in those case you have to check the stability of a protein and therefore this protein folding or stability concept is still relevant and there using simple tryptophan fluorescence measurement one can know the protein stability denaturation and so and so forth so this again uh, intrinsic tryptophan is used and of course you can find it out location of a tryptophan in a protein whether it is buried whether it is exposed semi exposed and whatever whatever so all these can be used to to intrinsic fluorescence can be used to study different behavior of a protein any question up to this point then i'll go to extrinsic fluorophore hardam wahi se hota hai right but we have two things that say that emission for local environment ka fark pata hai. There is a effect of local environment on the fluorophore. So first two three things will change. Quantum yield will change. Kitna light aega that will change. Also depending upon interaction with a solvent, there will be shift either in, in like a red shift or blue shift. So both change. Majority it does not changes. Like but few nanometer it can change upon interaction with a interaction with the solvent or environment electronic like a tryptophan in solution wherever you take just solution it will remain same but because of the influence by the solvent influenced by the local environment some emission uh, like a some shift will be always there in the intensity as well as the lambda max so that can be monitored but majority property remains same right property remains same influence can be there for from the different any other question okay but you know all like all the time you are not lucky with a fluorophore and many times tryptophan yeah tryptophan is not good enough for doing experiment because of quantum yield because of 
fluorescent lifetime if, if you want to measure something where tryptophan is not amenable for lifetime. So, you need to choose a molecule that is not present in the protein, but you can put on the protein. Kaise? This is called extrinsic fluorophore. Kaise put on protein? Any idea? How we can put a fluorophore on protein? Fluorophore ka gene insert kar dobe. So, fluorophore ko bhi protein hona padega tab us case mein, right? Agar fluorophore protein hai, to hum kar sakte hai, jaise udhar ek koi bhi maalo ki, GFP type, jo mein abhi a raha hon. Green fluorescent protein, that's another protein. You add a, add to your protein of interest. Both express, co-express together. Here is your protein of interest. Here is a green fluorescent protein. Your whole system become fluorescent and you can use it. But maan lo ki hamara protein chota hai aur itna mujhe molecular biology nahi karna hai. Kuch simple cheez batao. Can you tell? Haan, so that uh, secondary antibody you are, but then you are precipitating or whatever. You are probing your protein with secondary antibody which is fluorophore. This is called immunofluorescence, right? So you can do those experiment. But I am saying you do not like, do not go too much into detail complicacy. Can we think of a putting fluorophore on the protein, not precipitating, not even uh, doing molecular biology, simple, simple some ligation can we do that or do some mutation and try to think about that. Just I want to put quicker way to attach a fluorophore on the protein. These, these are all fluoro, like a fluorophore that we are talking about or DNA protein for like a GFP will not work on DNA. I just need to have a extrinsic fluorophore attached to a DNA. Kuch bhi, I am just saying some fluorescent dye I have to attach to a, uh, to a biomolecule protein, carbohydrate, whatever. So, can we do some chemistry, simple chemistry or simple biology? Very good. So, we can use modified bases which are fluorescent, right? Say two amino purine or something like that. Add it by synthesis. We can make it this fluorescence, and this is a reporter sitting there. In protein, what can we do? I have to attach one of these dye. The one simple, simple thing. Can I covalently add a uh, attach a fluorophore to protein? Kaise? I want to covalently. Because if agar fluorophore dal diye to rahega ya nahi rahega koi guarantee hai kya covalently attach kar denge to bechara rahega udhar right okay. oh group mein i can attach where else nh group mein i can attach right nh group kahan kahan hota hai nh3 group something like that protein lysine mein so lysine we can attach a fluorophore what a, where else we can attach coh o udhar fayda nahi hai why it, i'm saying you know um, if it is C terminus, then it is not because fluorophore you do not want to attach to extreme N terminus or extreme C terminus. We want to attach mostly to the side chain because udhar se property hame pata karni hai. There is a one beautiful amino acid which is amenable for covalent attachment, cysteine, right? Where CH2 SH. Here we can attach a fluorophore disulfide bond aisa kuch form kar di. So, most of the time what happens if you do not have a fluoro, fluoro, fluorophore in a protein like intrinsic fluorophore that we discussed, you create a mutation. Just remove a alanine and put a cysteine. Now, cysteine guy is very nice guy. It gives a side, its side chain for covalently attaching a fluorophore. So, we can attach many of these extrinsic fluorophore to cysteine and then we can do whatever we wanted to do. So, cysteine, the another one lysine, right, FITC is a dye which can bind to lysine side chain or bahut kuch kar sakte hain. So, these, there are various like a pyrene, pyrrolene, anthracene, aromatic amino acid derivatives, like many of these are essentially the fluorophore. Here is a like a list of fluorophore. Uh, some of them are non-conjugating fluorophore, they just go and bind to the protein and can be used. Cyber green, you might have heard, fluorescein, ANS, like this is ANS is used for uh, getting the, so this dye actually binds to the exposed hydrophobic surface of a protein. 
and uh, again used for various studies to look at how much this protein has exposed surface area, uh, hydrophobic surface area. So can be used. So these are the various way you can attach an extrinsic fluorophore to a protein. Intrinsic may tryptophan, tyrosine a gaya or kuch heme, flavine, FAD, NADH a gaya. Extrinsic may there are various dye that can be bind. Two common one, very easy one is ANS, FITC, fluorescein and all those or like you can attach say cyber green on any of such things even covalently you can attach Alexa kuch kuch hote hain. So, those uh, you die you can attach to the tyrosine right. So, we can use this for various property say determination property of like a binding of a heme binding site in hemoglobin a determination of conformational change when substrate binds de determination of strangeness in like a po polynucleotide various application you can do like uh, we will we'll go in detail and we will see. So, there are it opens up a wide application of fluorescence spectroscopy for getting the conformation, getting the kinetics, getting the conformational dynamics, uh, getting the measuring the distance between two moiety if we attach a fluorophore whether it is intrinsic or extrinsic. If you attach extrinsically lot more thing lot more can be done because first fluorescence is very sensitive it requires very less sample it all the events that happens in nanosecond it gives us a method to to probe this nanosecond time scale motion. So, fluorescence has really really wide application in many other things starting from the biophysics doing in test tube to doing like in cell to doing in organism. So, fluorescence really opens a, a wide variety of application uh, like it has a you can really look at the molecule how they diffuses this technique is called FCS I do not have time to go in detail of this fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. You can measure the distance that I am going to talk to you today which is called FRET you can do confocal you can do immunofluorescence, you can really track how the say protein is going inside the cell and then to nucleus and wherever going, you can do real time monitoring. So, lots of like it is a, it's a really powerful technique for studying lots of dynamics, conformational change, interactions, whatever, whatever all those. Great. So, that is all about application of intrinsic and extrinsic fluorophore, but you know so good but life is always complicated right complicated complication comes from how much radiation you get from fluorescence that always one has to think. So, if you remember we had discussed about this Jablonski diagram. So, there is only one radiative process phosphorescence ko chhod dete hain there is one radiative process, but there are many non radiative process right. So, it always competes radiative process always competes with non-radiative process. Non-radiative may internal conversion, inter-system crossing, thermal relaxation and lot more right. So, quenching one of the main important quenching, quenching means taking away the energy that was there in the excited state. So, it takes away the energy that is present in the excited state and make fluorescence less intense, less sensitive and all those. So, quenching essentially reduces the fluorescence signal that we are getting and this that is how something has a more life uh, sorry quantum yield something has a less quantum yield, but quencher is a molecule that takes actually fluorescence energy that is there. So, quenching is very important concept uh, uh, like consideration in fluorescence it is used for studying many things how much tryptophan is exposed to the solvent how much it is buried inside this. So, lot more conformation again can be used using quenching. Now, quenching is one such phenomena it is external factor external factor quenching is external factor with a practical application lots of practical application in the presence of quencher we can add acrylamide is a quencher it quenches the fluorescence. So, there are quencher molecules decreases the quantum yield agar as a quantum yield like 0.5 hai if you add quencher it depending upon concentration it decreases the quantum yield ok. Now, yeah so in presence of quencher the absorption decreases even fluorescence decreases. 
So, energy of excited state is transferred to this quenching molecule and that is how your quantum yield decreases and you can find it out whether there is a quencher. It can be also self quenching, apne ko hi transfer kar deta hai. So, self quenching again is a, is a phenomena. So, in those cases probably by studying unfolding the protein looking at how much quantum yield, how much quantum yield. So, lots of things can be done to understand the effect of quenching, but it is a phenomena that is already inbuilt. You can add even quencher to change your fluorescence emission, right. <coughs> so, there can be two kind of quenching, one is called dynamic quenching, one is called static quenching. Dynamic quenching, right, you see what is happening, I have a fluorophore, I have a quencher, right. So, one is like a, if these two interacts, there is a collision between fluorophore and the quencher in the excited state this kind of quenching will be called dynamic quenching, right. And if a quencher forms a complex with a fluorophore, right, there is no association dissociation, it just form a complex with the fluorophore, this will be called static quenching. So, in dynamic quenching, one more parameter is coming, association and dissociation between these, right. So, complex has a different electronic state compared to fluorophore alone it will form a complex, it can change your electronic state, right. That is what we are talking about solvent effect that also perturbs, but quencher to a larger extent changes the difference in the excited ground state and that that it radiates now, uh, sorry, it does not radiate, it relaxes by a non radiating process and that is how it decreases the quantum yield to a larger extent. So, two kind of static permanent complex type bana liya, reduce ka there. Dynamic, it forms a complex and it has a lifetime for that. So, that is how the, the effect of quenching is plotted in terms of an equation which is called stern volmer equation. So, that gives you idea about quenching. So, for a dynamic quenching, the equation is going to be like this, I 0 means whatever light I am giving, I 1 whatever light it is coming. So, I 0 by I 1 minus 1 or you can put it plus 1 whatever minus 1 will be k q that is a k q is a rate constant yeah rate constant for quenching process. C q is the concentration of a quencher and T 0 is a lifetime of a fluorescence. Lifetime you remember decay curve kitni jaldi decay hota hai. So, in dynamic quenching because since there is a association dissociation going on. So, how fast it decays or how slow it decays that determines the quenching effect, but if it is permanently forming a complex between quencher and a fluorophore that does not depend upon of, of the life. So, this can be <coughs> only the quenching constant uh, as concentration of a quencher and the rate constant for a quenching process. So, these are the two uh, static and dynamic quenching and it can be plotted using a stern Vormel equation and uh, one can do experiment to find it out the lifetime or whatever property of a quencher and quenching process. Now, if we know this, can we use this concept to study some idea or some confirmation about protein of quenching process? Can we design some experiment? Anyone think about it? I have a intrinsic suppose an intrinsic fluorophore and can I do quenching experiment to understand something. Quencher use kyun karte hain, quencher use karte hain us fluorophore ke behavior ko samajhne ke liye. Absorption hai, emission hai, but fluorophore ka kis state mein hai, buried hai, exposed hai, kitna fast move kar raha hai, kitna slow move kar raha hai, iske liye hum quencher use karte uh, no, normal to tumhara like it gives just a ensemble picture of of this quencher you can get some more detail so can you think of an experiment using this concept of quenching agar semi tryptophan hai do jagah par okay think about i will come to that think about a protein where the tryptophan is buried and tryptophan is exposed theek hai 
are you going to get a tryptophan, same tryptophan, are you going to get a same absorption spectrum or emission spectrum? No. Why? Okay, good. Now, absorption jada hoga. Kitna jada hoga, we do not know. Abhi now, let us see, we want to get a more quantitative. Now, we add some quencher to this. Right? We add some quencher to this. Kis me quencher jaldi jake bind karega or kis me strongly bind karega? Expose me, wonderful. So, expose ka agar quencher dal diya, to oh, like it will dec decrease the intensity quite a bit drastically. If we have a buried tryptophan, it does not decrease that much. <coughs> so, now by adding quencher, plotting this, measuring the intensity, I know whether my tryptophan is buried inside or exposed outside. Right? The second thing, as I said, protein is not a static entity, it is quite dynamic. So, in one case, tryptophan, when it is buried, it is rotating slowly, in one case, it is rotating faster. Your quenching can also help in understanding the dynamic quenching, understand helping whether it is buried inside or exposed outside. So, these are the application of quenching experiment. I will show you some of the example that one of my student did. So, two things you need to know if it is static or dynamic, you need to know the lifetime because in dynamic quenching it forms collision complex between fluorophore and quencher right in a static it forms a permanent complex so here uh, one of my student was working on a protein which look like this okay now this protein whatever forget what is the protein the good part is it has a two tryptophan right one was in the n terminus another was in the c terminus right so now two tryptophan is always a problem because signal you do not know whether it is coming from the n terminus or c terminus, but molecular biology is there let us use it. So, what she did? She mutated one tryptophan at a time, usne do mutant banai, here she silent this, put it something which is non fluorescent may say she put it lysine, so, uh, leucine, leucine, hydrophobicity nahi change karna, you can even put phenylalanine. So, here she mutated one at a time. So, now I have one mutant which is only one tryptophan is active, in another case she mutated this one and only kept this one active right. So, two protein I have in one protein only n terminus tryptophan is active, in another protein only c terminus. Now, whatever I am getting exclusively signal coming either from the n terminus or coming from the c terminus. We had to understand like we have to understand whether which protein like which portion of a protein n terminus or c terminus is more flexible more exposed than the other one. So, she did uh, forget at the moment this part it is a little more complicated I will just want to show you this axis ok. K q axis K q is what rate constant for. So, now here you just focus this portion at the moment ok. So, two signal C, C is getting two rate constant of two tryptophan, one from the n terminus, another from the C terminus. So, what it means W178L, it means that here 178 tryptophan was mutated. So, only it is the signal is coming from the n terminus. Now, in another case, it is saying that signal is coming from C terminus. Look at these two value with whatever error bar given here. So, what it says? Can you look at this value and interpret this data? So, two things are given here, one is lifetime, T m is lifetime, lifetime I told you right, how decade and another is and third one is anisotropy that I had not discussed in detail. So, here three parameters are measured from tryptophan one at a time n terminus or c terminus three parameters are plotted lifetime, quenching rate right rate constant for quenching and not quantum rate constant k q lifetime and something called uh, like uh, anisotropy ok. So, now can you now think 
look at the data and try to interpret and understand what is happening here. Exam may ask question honge, right? Straightforward question nahi hoga. So chena hoga. So pahle ha quenching me dekhte hain. So iska KQ value is higher, right? This is higher than this one. So what it says? It's more flexible. So if you look at the tryptophan here and tryptophan here, it's mostly in a structured portion. This is in less structured portion. So by doing this KQ experiment, I can conclude that the tryptophan that was present in the N terminus is more exposed than the tryptophan in the C terminus. Another one is lifetime. Can you just now look at the uh, dark blue shaded? Huh? It's the same. So it says that both have a same lifetime, right? So even if you now this is modal structure, don't worry about the structure at the moment because if the structure is pata hoga to baki kuch pata ka fluorescence karne ki jarurat hai kya hai, right? Param gang ko chhad piya se durmat kub khanaave wo wala hal hai. If you know the structure, you you can do the lots of study. But suppose you don't know the structure, you have to start getting some information. So this protein structure was not known. This is a kind of a modal structure to for us to visualize where can be tryptophan, we have modeled this. So here, if you look at the lifetime, both are both are uh, both are more or less same. So it says that kind of like a lifetime for both is same. However, N terminus tryptophan is more flexible than the C terminus tryptophan. At the moment, we will just ignore the an isotropy value, we will come to that slightly later. Any question up to this point? Is it clear to everyone? Kya bhai? Clear ho gaya? Huh? समझ में आया या नहीं ठीक है तो अभी क्वेश्चन ऐसा दिया जाएगा तो इसका इंटरप्रिटेशन तुम लिख सकते हो या नहीं लिख सकते हो ना अगर नहीं आया तो फिर से बताऊंगा लेकिन इंटरप्रिटेशन उसका इंटरप्रिटेशन बेसिकली लाइफ टाइम ये डिटरमिन करता कितना लूज जल्दी करता है तो अगर मान लो कि लाइफ टाइम अलग होता तो ये बोल रहा है कि कितना it's not compact, hai, right? Compactness also. It's a kind of corroborates two parameters we are saying. So if lifetime is low, that means it is decaying very fast, right? So that means neighboring environment is such that it is giving its energy to the neighbor. That means it is quite buried inside. Hmm? नहीं क्वेंचिंग रेट कहाँ ज़्यादा है ये देखो यहाँ पर एक्सिस है ये नहीं ये तो 178 एल हो गया है सो वनली ट्रिप्टोफेन प्रेजेंट इज हियर डब्लू सेवेन हियर द प्रेजेंट इज 178 सो दिस इज़ फ्रॉम सी टर्मिनस दिस इज़ फ्रॉम एन टर्मिनस Great. So that's all about say a little bit about fluorescence and its application. I showed you at least two parameters. Let's go do something more interesting. Ah, ah, ah. Bilkul. Quantum yield to kyun change ho gaya hai? Ah, my same hi protein hai. Like same retinol. In solution has one quantum yield, when it binds to protein has another quantum yield. So what do you infer from this information? Usme value ka kuch jada matlab nahi, you don't have to calculate, just tell about flexibility. Actually Deepak also understood this question. Kya Deepak? Or retinol ka binding tumne samaj liya tha na? Haan? Kaise wo kya ho raha hai usme? Abhi thoda in loho ko bata sakte ho? Haan batao. Wo ek question tha na kal retinol ka binding? हाँ हाँ 
हाँ कि कितना उसका क्वांटम मिल चेंज हो गया बी एस एस से हाँ तो उसके बाद क्या हुआ था उसकी क्वांटम मिल चेंज हो गई थी क्यों चेंज हुई यही तो पूछा था क्वेश्चन हाँ तो क्वांटम इल्ड चेंज हो गई घटी थी या बढ़ी थी याद है बढ़ी थी बढ़ी थी तो भटी बढ़ गई तो इसका मतलब क्या हुआ हाँ तो उसकी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी रिजिडिटी बढ़ गई थी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी कम हो गई थी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी कम हो गई तो इसका मतलब ये है कि लाइक वट एवर एज आई सेट देर इज ऑलवेज कॉम्पिटिशन बिटवीन रेडिएटिव एंड नॉन रेडिएटिव प्रोसेस क्वांटम इल इंक्रीज दैट मीन्स you are getting more signal in the radiative one than the non radiative one so because of the rigidity increase the other competitive phenomena decreased right zaruri nahi hai pehle like there are in the solution now it is protected more after bsa binding so that क्वांटम इल्ड क्यों बढ़ेगी टेल थिंक अबाउट इट नहीं दो दो पैरामीटर थे क्वांटम इल्ड और लाइफ टाइम पहले क्वांटम इल्ड का वी विल डिस्कस सो क्वांटम इल्ड इज इंक्रीजिंग दैट मींस फ्लोरोफोर ज्यादा रेडिएटिव प्रोसेस में जा रहा है कंपेयर टू नॉन रेडिएटिव प्रोसेस सो थिंक व्हेन इट वाज फ्लेक्सिबल व्हाट कुड बी हैपनिंग फ्लेक्सिबल था तो उसके कंपटीशन ज्यादा थे नॉन रेडिएटिव प्रोसेस में ज्यादा फोटॉन्स जा रहे थे कंपेयर टू एन इट इज बाउंड राइट सो दैट दैट इज द सिंपल क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट लाइक इट्स नॉट लाइक वॉट एवर फ्लेक्सिबल टू रिजिडिटी दैट यू हैव टू तो उसका वेवलेंस शिफ्ट होगा तब ना क्वांटम मिल्ड का क्वेश्चन था यू आर राइट रुको एक मिनट लेट्स एक पहले इसका कर लेते हैं फिर तुम्हारे पर आते हैं हाँ नाउ सपोज यू आर सेइंग दैट अपॉन बाइंडिंग द एनर्जी गैप हैज इंक्रीज राइट सो एनर्जी गैप विल इंक्रीज दैट मींस योर एब्जॉर्बन वेवलेंथ एक्साइटेशन वेवलेंथ विल डिक्रीज राइट सो दैट मीन्स योर एमिशन वेवलेंथ विल ऑल्सो पर्टर्ब गेट पर्टर्ब राइट इट विल शिफ्ट टूअर्ड्स ब्लू here we are not talking about shift in the spectra either towards red or to blue only information that you get from question is quantum yield has increased that means we are like not saying the solvent effect not saying the substrate effect we are saying that because of this binding your quantum yield has increased that means you have reduced the non radiative process competitive non radiative process to a larger extent and that's how you are getting more quantum yield okay, but we can think the either way you can think either way but information only says this nahi sir non matlab quantum yield kiya hai to hum to kaise bhi soch sakte hai ya fir hame kuch specify karna padega nahi tumhare paas information kya tha quantum yield ka aur lifetime ka baaki to tum apne se kuch bhi bana lo to uska koi matlab nahi hua na lekin sir aa to rahe na ek hi answer pe nahi ek hi answer par nahi aa rahe you are just coming to the answer that because of binding to bsa its flexibility decreases and because of that the non radiative process that were competing the one of them can be quenching has decreased and that's how your quantum yield has increased sir lifetime ke kaun se effect hai ek main phir se aata hu tum pehle iske baad then suraj then you okay energy gap determines the number of photon that are emitted yes that's right Right. 
So that's why we are saying that if that happens, you get shift in the spectrum towards blue. That is true, but nothing to do with quantum yield. Quantum yield is what? Number of photon emitted by number of photon absorbed. So, if you are shifting your say energy gap, your absorption is also increasing, your emission is also increasing. Quantum yield remains. Usme to change hone ka koi baat nahi aara hai. It is shifting. Quantum yield increasing means your non radiative process has gone down. Now, Suraj, your question. क्वांटम इल्ड बढ़ रहा है तो ज्यादा एक्सपोज होने की गारंटी नहीं है क्वांटम इल्ड बढ़ने का मतलब यह हुआ कि रेडिएटिव में ज्यादा आ रहा है एक्सपोज होने के चलते देखो एक्सपोज सॉल्वेंट से भी एनर्जी जा सकता है क्वेंचर से भी जा सकता है कुछ और भी होगा जो कंप्लीट करता है उससे जा सकता है सो इट इज डज नॉट ऑलवेज मीन एक्सपोजर और वट एक्सपोजर के लिए हम वो के करते हैं Yes. That's right. No, no. If it is flexible or sorry, not flexible. If it is exposed, quencher. If you do this KQ experiment, if you add quencher, then you are getting same thing, right? That's what I discuss here. If you add quencher, then more and more energy will be taken by quencher. Your, if you probe this KQ, it will be different. Right? So, KQ in this case, if you look at the left hand side, that is your n terminus, KQ is higher. That means it is more exposed. Lots of energy has been taken by quencher compared to radiative process. Usme hamne quencher ka naam hi nahi liya tha, usme kewal quantum yield bataya tha. Quantum yield ka ye matlab hai. Abhi, we have not introduced the concept of quencher there. We are saying in one case the quantum yield is low, in another case quantum yield is high. What could be, like wh wh why this could be? So, that is the answer you have to give it. If you add quencher uh, agreement, we add something anisotropy agreement, then we can talk something more. Uh, rigid ho gaya hai, uske chalte non radiative process. कहीं नहीं इसमें प्रैक्टिस कर सकते हो इफ यू आर लाइक इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट दैट्स व्हाई आई एम गिविंग लॉट मोर टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन यू द कांसेप्ट इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट देन यू कैन थिंक लिटिल बिट आई सो एवरीथिंग डज नॉट लाइक कैन नॉट बी टॉट यू बिकॉज़ वी टीच बेसिक कांसेप्ट इन द क्लास यू हैव टू अप्लाई दैट कांसेप्ट टू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम आफ्टर दिस आइदर यू आर गोइंग टू डू रिसर्च or you are going to do say even if you are working in a company or you open your own company or do whatever you want. If you are in science and using this concept, you have to solve the problem using this concept, right? Nobody will teach it, only we teach how to make a rice, but you have to learn how to make a kheer out of this teaching how to make a rice, theek hai? Kitna chini kitna gur dalenge, kitna dur dalenge, usme kon kon sa malai dalenge, that you have to learn by yourself. देखो लाइफ टाइम अगर हाँ सो लाइफ टाइम का सो लाइफ टाइम किसी चीज का व्हाई इट इज से लो इफ यू गो टू लाइफ टाइम यू थिंक अबाउट इट अगेन आई विल आस्क यू टू थिंक राइट हियर इज अ लाइफ टाइम थिंक अबाउट दिस सो Emission fluorophore with a long lifetime, emission fluorophore with a short type length. We are exciting with the samples, something decaying very fast, something decaying very slow. What does it mean? Nay, ye, ye process matao, lifetime chodo, jada or kam chodo. Koi agar same hi excitation kiye hai, amne usko same energy level peidar pohuncha diya. Something is decaying very fast, something is decaying very slow. What does it mean intuitively to you? Any of you? Slow decay kar raha hai, jada that, man slow jo decay kar raha hai, uska matlab woh dheere dheere apni energy lose kar raha hai. Fast decay kar raha hai, woh 
जल्दी कर रहा है तो धीरे धीरे डीके करने का मतलब क्या हुआ जो धीरे धीरे कर रहा है उसका मतलब नॉन रेडिएटिव में उसकी एनर्जी धीरे धीरे जा रही है मैंने इसका मतलब वो धीरे धीरे लूज कर रहा है उसके पास अगर मान लो तुम्हारे पास बहुत सारा पैसा है और बहुत चोर आ गए तो एक ही जल्दी से गाय गायब हो जाएगा ऑल दी मनी इफ यू आर स्पेंडिंग स्लोली 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 दैट्स वॉट इट इज है सो योर इफ समथिंग लाइफ टाइम इज मोर दैट मीन्स इट इज डिकेइंग स्लो दैट मीन्स कॉम्पिटिटिव कॉम्पिटिटिव लाइक वॉट एवर कॉम्पिटिटिव एनर्जी डेसिपेटर्स आर लेस कंपेयर टू दैट सो यू हैव टू थिंक इन दैट एंगल टू एंसर एनी ऑफ दिज क्वेश्चन लाइफ टाइम कम ज्यादा का दिस इज जस्ट यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन दीज टू टर्म क्वेंचिंग सॉरी या द्वान्टम मिल्ड एंड लाइफ टाइम इन टर्म्स ऑफ द प्रोटीन फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी इट जस्ट सेज रेटिनॉल है उसका लाइफ टाइम एक है बी एस ए का बाइंड होने के बाद ये हो गया वॉट कुड हैपन अपॉन बाइंडिंग नो आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट रिजिडिटी फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी से कॉम्पिटिटिव का नहीं है कॉम्पिटिटिव ज़्यादा होगा इसका मतलब योर एमिशन सॉरी लाइफ टाइम विल भी लाइक इट विल डिके वेरी फास्ट इफ द कॉम्पिटिशन इज मोर इफ कॉम्पिटिशन इज लेस दैट मीन्स इट डिके स्लो दैट्स वॉट लाइफ टाइम टेल्स यू अबाउट फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी रिजिडिटी कैन कम फ्रॉम वेरियस देर इज अनदर टर्म कॉल एन आइसोट्रोपी वी हैव टू मेजर दैट सो देर आर वेरियस पैरामीटर दैट वी आर मेजरिंग वन इज क्वान्टम इल्ड another is lifetime another is anisotropy another is kq so there are four five parameter that we measure don't correlate everything to flexibility and rigidity that <coughs> comes with various experiment one experiment exposure one experiment lifetime one experiment anisotropy so that tells you how fast or how slow they are moving there are various complementary techniques that tells about that don't correlate one to everyone it's not one solution uh, in science quencher tells you about kitna expose hai kitna like it the the external quencher molecule can access that so there are various parameter don't correlate everything to one rigidity and flexibility no 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 quantum mill is different thing fluorescence jyada kyun ho raha hai bolo that's what you are not understanding क्वांटम इल्ड और फ्लोरसेंस इंटेंसिटी दोनों में अंतर है क्वांटम इल्ड का मतलब व्हाट इज क्वांटम इल्ड नंबर ऑफ फोटॉन्स एमिटेड बाय नंबर ऑफ फोटॉन एब्जॉर्ब दैट्स अ क्वांटम इल्ड इंटेंसिटी व्हाट इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द सेपरेशन बिटवीन ग्राउंड स्टेट एंड एक्साइटेड स्टेट हाँ ज्यादा एमिशन देगा ज्यादा एब्जॉर्ब रेशियो कितना हुआ राइट right? एब्जॉर्ब भी ज्यादा कर रहा है इमिट भी ज्यादा कर रहा है ज्यादा पीक बड़ी हो गई एब्जॉर्ब कम कर रहा है इमिट कम कर रहा है सो so, यहां पर एब्जॉर्ब ज्यादा और दूसरे केस में इमिट ज्यादा सो हियर इज योर यू आर ट्रांजिशनिंग फ्रॉम से अल्फा हेलिक्स टू रैंडम क्वाइल राइट बट वॉट इज क्वांटम इल्ड डज नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन दिस क्वांटम इल्ड इज हाउ मच फोटोन यू आर एमिटिंग वर्सेज हाउ मच फोटोन यू आर एब्जॉर्बिंग तो क्वांटम इल्ड for this can change depending upon various stuff no structure se quantum yield ka koi matlab nahi quantum yield is a property of a fluorophore nahi like a quantum yield agar kisi cheez ka change ho raha hai that means now it has a more like a more radi going into more radiative process so it's not all only about the structure that's what i'm saying there are various parameters that you have to consider when you talk about the structure and dynamics not just the intensity fluorescence intensity gives you some phenomena but to understand the structure to understand the dynamics you have to measure various parameter that we are now slowly discussing with you okay that's what i'm saying it tells you like here we have given an example whether it is in helix or in sheet or in random coil you can have a different intensity of a fluorophore so you can measure how the fluorescence is changing right when it is buried or when when it is exposed in some case say fluorescence if it is buried you get a less intensity when it goes to expose you get a more intensity so this tells about a structural change that will happen to this fluorophore again so this is a simple qualitative way you can measure it change in the intensity of a fluorophore now you want to go more detail and understand its dynamics or its exposure so for exposure experiment what we are going to do start adding quenching quencher 
and study how much KQ changes, how quenching is. So that will tell you about whether my fluorophore in this state is a buried or exposed. How much quencher can access that? That's then you can do lifetime measurement. You can do the the one thing that we are going to say polarization experiment, anisotropy experiment that tells about the dynamics of your fluorophore. So there are various experiments that that can be combined to understand the protein dynamics. Now coming to another concept, I will take another 10 minutes before I move. Yeah. So one of the popular one of the popular fluorophore in protein is called green fluorescent protein. Right. So this protein is beautiful. Right. Chuhe ko bhi lal hara kar sakte hain. So it's a isolated from a jellyfish and it has an excitation wavelength um, of 395, right? Emission in the green, that's why it is green fluorescent protein 509. It's a simple 238 amino acid, about 29 kD protein, uh, 27 kD protein. And GFP is, GFP ka quantum yield is 0.79. That means very high quantum yield compared to many other things. So quantum yield is quite high about 80 percent it is a so whatever photons it absorbs versus whatever photons it emits is about 80 percent. So that is why it is one of the preferred one and these guys basically discovered this and they got a Nobel prize. Well, this GFP is now widely used for many things. Discovery and development of green fluorescent protein they get a Nobel prize in chemistry in 2008. Okay. Now here look at what actually is fluoro fluorescein. So here is a beta barrel protein which is GFP, it's a quite rigid structure, it's a beta barrel protein and in this there is a fluorophore, it's a uh, like if you look at it's a beta barrel right, 11 beta strands covalently linked chromophore which is HBI. That basically it's a it's a does some chemical reactions and essentially gives a molecule which is green in fluorescence and the Amino acid that are involved here is serine, glycine, uh, tyrosine and glycine basically the proton transfer essentially gives is a fluorescent uh, flavor. So chromophore forms spontaneously upon folding of the polypeptide these are amino acid that are there and that is a fluor green fluorescent protein. So now green fluorescent protein become kind of a revolution in cell biology experiment because as uh, somebody said you can fuse the gene and express your protein. So anything suppose I want to track something just add a GFP either to N terminus or C terminus and it can make your whole protein like the at least the GFP is there. So you can you have tagged your protein with green fluorescent protein you can track how protein is going. In a real time you can do this like on focal by high resolution spectroscopy. You can really monitor how the where the signal is coming from green fluorescent protein. So you can do it. So one can do the fluorescence microscopy with GFP. It is used as a reporter gene. It reports where the molecule is going, how it is going from one place to another place, Golgi to whatever ER, entering to nucleus, entering to lysosome, wherever it is going. It, if it, you get a fluorescence, you know that here is my protein going. So that is what green fluorescent protein does, right. So fluorescence microscopy, live cell imaging it can do and GFP has an internal chromophore. So it does not require any accessory protein, gene product or enzyme, just attach your protein, this green fluorescent protein to your protein of interest and it reports its locality. But this is fantastic for doing cellular image, but there is a problem in doing biophysics. What? Why? In biophysics also you can do that, but generally it is not preferred, GFP. In cell to it is a larger complex like a compartment you can attach a GFP to your protein and do whatever you want. But biophysics it is not so preferred, I will prefer a small dye, GFP ka weight jada hai, right. So agar itna bada mera protein hai aur itna bada GFP add kar denge, to it is not good, right. So generally we try to add a small fluorophore and because you know the attaching fluorophore like GFP can change lots of property of a protein. Uh, it can affect the folding of a protein, it can 
affect the dynamics of a protein. So, because of this size is quite big 27 kg, generally in biophysics it is not so preferred, but in cell biology this is becomes quite handy. So, you can attach your GFP to any other protein and track it. So, after this discovery of GFP, people engineered many things, right. GFP is one coming from the fish, you can mutate it and make your own protein of different flavor and that is how variants of GFP are there. Red fluorescent protein, yellow fluorescent protein, all of these fluorescent proteins have been. So, you can see the blue fluorescent protein, cyan fluorescent protein, green fluorescent protein, yellow fluorescent protein, whatever red fluorescent protein and they have a absorption spectra and followed emission spectra. So, now we have different kind, different flavor of fluorescent protein, we can attach wherever we want and we can do whatever we want, right. In biophysics always we want to do our things. So, suppose I want to understand in cell two proteins are interacting or not. So, kya karenge? Ek mein kala tic, uh, hara tikka lagayenge, dusre mein lal tikka lagayenge aur dono ko chhod denge. Agar wo log aapas mein mile, to color mujhe ek jaga dikhega. This is called co-localization. So, really looking at the green fluorescent protein and red fluorescent protein, if they are interacting, they will co-localize in the cell and I can understand whether they are interacting in cell or not. Suppose I want to see whether my protein goes and binds to nuclear membrane or cytoplasmic membrane or ER or wherever, I just attach my green and look at the architecture. If I can attach, so uh, stain dye with some other color and see if these two color are co-localizing or not. So, there are various like that is what became handy with this molecular biology and some protein engineering people made so many variants that it became quite handy to understand the cellular dynamics, protein part partitioning, where protein and going and all those uh, one can prove it. So, should we stop here and or should we go further? Huh? Okay. Uh, next is freight, fluorescence resonance energy transfer. Catches. So, next is freight fluorescence resonance energy transfer, which is used for measuring the distance between. So, that we will be doing it in the next class.